Well, hi there, racing fans, and welcome to another edition of Winning Ways, where we've got a fabulous show for you, as normal, but um, something very special in uh, the Your Call segment. We've got the Dali Stallions Day, and it's a wonderful clip which shows you all the best stallions being paraded in England at Dali. It's well worth the watch. Whether you like horses, don't like horses, love stallions, don't love the racing business, have a close look at that. But I'm t we had a good week uh, as far as sport was concerned. Yeah, yeah, it was a good week, and not for the Irish. You know, we, we were thumped. I've got my Irish regalia on to go cheer home the Irish, and they got thumped 25-7. And what I couldn't believe was the comeback in two games of rugby, with the Lions being 33-5 down and the Scottish being 31-0 down and coming drawing 38 after leading 38-31. Great game of rugby. Uh, I've got a couple of pointers to make. Okay. One is we watched that guy Egon Seconds uh, refereeing yeah. again. Yeah. He is not worth refereeing. He should not keep his license. He might have been a, a rugby player or whatever, but he's got no clue. He blows totally inconsistently. Um, we saw a terrible match with him the, the week before, and we saw a terrible match again with him this week. Angus Gardner, the Australian referee, yeah. the, 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 game game. In the Irish game, I thought he was very inconsistent too. He took a lot of flack from the Irish, but uh, don't take it away from Wales. You know, they're no, no, out, outstanding, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I noticed on, this is quite interesting. After the Wales game, a couple of the Welshmen had something to say, so I just posted, Wales might be worth having a look at um, in the World Cup. But uh, a couple of the Irish took exceptions, notably the one on my right-hand side. Said they, it's a different game. Someone must use my name. I never commented to any of your posts. Okay. But uh, they are, I tell you, all those, and apart from Italy, those other teams have got a chance in the World Cup, the Northern Hemisphere. They've all got a chance. England's defence is good. Scotland can score tries. They showed it at Twickenham. They kept the Calcutta Cup. Wales, Wales is... Uh, 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 interesting, but I want to just tell you what I did. Just this is very interesting. I took my phone and put on my stopwatch. Every time it was a scrum, I did it for one half the game. Every time they got a scrum, I put the clock on. Yes. And I ran it until the ball was thrown in. Yeah. And we went on. If the, if the scrum went down or the players came up, I turned it off until they reset and I put it on. 11 and f minutes 50 seconds of lost time. Complete rubbish, it's, and let me yeah. tell you, the ref is to blame. Yeah. No one else. Yeah. Not the players. The players take a chance. They can see. You see these guys scrumming in. Yeah, but James, the, the point is, just put the clock on when the, when the ball goes in. No. You, you know, you kill a game. Get in front, get a scrum, boom, go up, just set again, go up, no. set again. You know how quickly you stop it. Blow, penalty against you, collapse the scrum. You'll see next time they don't collapse it. I mean, yeah. immediately it stops the game. Angus Gardner... Um, he reset the scrum. 11 minutes 50 and one half, James, of non-play. Of no play. Yeah. It's Which just not acceptable. Rugby, it's like rugby, uh, it's like rugby league now. Everyone's it's square, the ball yeah. comes out. It's crash tackle, crash tackle, crash tackle, recycle. Whoever spills it, the other team gets the ball. Where the running get breaks, I watched all those big games. Where was the, the, the great rugby of yesteryear? They've got to look at the rules, James. Okay, and I, the, the other point that really aggravates me is this knock-on rule. When a guy knocks the ball out of a player's hand, it's yes. a knock-on against the player that lost the ball. Yeah. That makes no sense. No sense. Okay? Absolutely hang on to no ball. sense. If the guy's knocked the player out of the player's hand, it should be yes. a knock-on against him. He's knocked it on. I no, know he might have knocked it back, times, but he's yeah, knocked it on. A lot on. of times you, it, that does happen. But uh, they've got to look at the rugby rules. Okay. They, they keep uh, reinventing what rugby. What about uh, the, a bit of uh, football? Any it? United boys phone you again? No, the United Not boys one. quiet. Didn't Arsenal beat them? Then, then, then Wolves. Yeah. Wolves, Wolves beat Wolves them as well, yeah. Took yeah. them out of the FA Cup. Yeah. They're out of the FA Cup. So it's not all a bed of roses. Chelsea lost away at uh, Everton. Their top four aspirations took a dent there. So that's not too good. But... Uh, it, it, it was, there, there was some... Uh... Golf, did you watch the golf? No. You know why we never watch the golf? No. Load shedding, we're on stage four so load shedding. What's going on with this country? It's the middle of summer. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got batteries, so I don't miss a thing, I don't miss a game. Two TVs You've got my batteries, life. eh? You know, batteries and inverters and all that, so I don't miss a thing. Okay, I'll, be, I'll tell Sandra to use her batteries. Yeah, okay. well, keep it, yeah, keep those, <laughs> keep those. Okay, let's go and have a look at the three to follow. Thank <laughs> you.
Right, let's go and have a look at our three to follow. And we kick off at Gravel. And um, uh, this horse uh, of Mario Ferreira's, uh, he's actually uh, put in the play twice today. Uh, he's got some nice horses. This is a very nice horse. So this ran an extremely good barrier trial, this horse left. The barrier trial showed the ability of the horse, and it won like a horse with a lot of ability. Padre Pio, Gravel Turf. We've raced on the turf yesterday. Let's go and pick him up at the start. Yeah, there's two of them. This horse here pulls very hard. It, he's a very difficult rider. Arthur gets him into the race quickly, and then he realizes this that guy ain't going to settle. He starts throwing his head up. And because he's throwing his head up so much in third, Arthur loves being in the vanguard. He clips heels and nearly comes down. It's uh, about another two furlongs. Now Arthur's trying to get him on the fence to settle. He's still very difficult. But you see that, James? He's very difficult. And any moment now, if you keep an eye on the red cap in fourth, he clips heels because he won't settle. Oops, yeah. there we go. Yeah. And uh, I think Arthur thought, whoa. But I think it helped him settle a bit. And uh, he looks very talented. James, the first year race in the card who won by Verse and Getterix. This is another Verse and Getterix. Well, we're going to show the um, other race, but this was a very, very nice win. This was, uh, his barrier trial was um, outstanding. He ran behind the Red Hot Knight. The time was good, 58. Um, came from off them. And he, he really came, uh, ran on extremely well. This horse has got a future. Yeah. Uh, he pulls out after having had no luck in the race. I'm not sure that he beat the greatest field. No, no, there's nothing wrong with this, James. Lovely horse to run her up. I don't know about third and fourth, but I do know I had a good look at this runner up. Been runner up twice now. And it fights back the runner up, but this horse has had a, f a few things go wrong for him here, Padre Pia, but he, he shows he's got ability here. Oh, this is, this is a horse with tons of ability. Great action. Verse and Jetrix. Let's just see. Uh, it was bred by um, Miss BMA Giddy um, and was bought by Mario Ferreira. Verse and Jetrix out of a Jetmaster mare. I and heard them saying, I heard, uh, uh, what's his name, Des saying that. I think Linton Ryan had helped him buy this horse. And I know Linton's a big fan of Verse and Getterix. Yeah, I'm certainly a big fan Me of too. his too. Me too. Right, we're going to move to the Cape, and we had a look at the third race at Durbanville. Now, they're back at racing at Durbanville, and uh, this filly, uh, Sanskrit, was very unlucky. She got caught on the post. She went and made every post a winning post and got caught the last stride. Let's go and uh, see uh, Sanskrit, race three at Durbanville. She's uh, also Mario Ferreira's colours. Aldo de Mayo rides her for Candace Bass Robinson. Yeah, here we go. You can see the colours now. He was owner of the month, uh, owner of the year in KZN last year. Mario, he's uh, a man who's put his money in, <coughs> and he's uh, getting the results now, which is great. It's always good when the guys put the money in and get results. And the horse who wins this is driving Miss Daisy, who's more experienced than the Sanskrit. Sanskrit goes off to, to the front, and uh, as James alluded to, it, it just gets run out of it. Well, Sanskrit's cruising along there in front. Of driving Miss Daisy is in uh, Kuhn colours, black and a white with a red cap, one off the fence, second last, uh, is the winner. So you'll see that runs a, a wins an extremely good race. But this filly, for all the life, looked like she was going to win and win easily. She's in front, she's cantering along, and um, Aldo says to her, OK, he just actually sits on her to the 300-meter mark, and she quickens up well. She goes away from um, the danger, uh, master of the house is up next door to her, and she just quickens up well here. And th I thought this was all over. Yeah, now you watch the filly on switch out towards the outside, and Greg Sheen gets into it. But here, Sanskrit, just under her hands right, um, has taken Boom. over. Greenness beat her, that's all. If she'd had something to race with, I'm sure she would have won. You can see her ears going left and right, and Whoa. she gets caught on the post. Yeah, no, no. She'll yeah. win her next start. That's so. right. Sanskrit, be with it. Then we go to the first race at Gravel again on Sunday. And this is a very nice horse. Uh, I thought this horse ran an exceptional barrier trial. A very good action in the barrier trial. Got tired a little late. And it was 10, 12 to 1. And uh, on the podcast, the Interbet podcast, I said, include this in all your play. And it uh, ran a cracker. We like the fire. Yoga's governor. Uh, let's go and pick it up at the start. Yeah, there was a lot of talk in this race, James. 
uh, of different horses who were going to come through and win this race. Draw one was your favourite. A lot of money on a horse called Ninotto who had barrier trialled well. Double games in the red had barrier trialled well as well. The, the eventual winner is three deep uh, in the second row is the African Warrior, which is the other verse in Gidrick. This one wins a very good race. But we light the fires off the speed, Jim. Yeah, give me the green light out of a, uh, a very nice and costly Lago mare, properly Australian bred. This has uh, got the white sleeves on the outside, and um, Sherman Brown rides it. He now angles it out to go after them. The winner comes down the inside, uh, uh, Dean Canamare's colours, and I see it got a couple of the boys involved. There it goes straight through the middle of the pack. And this horse runs on on the outside. I like this horse. This horse got a good action. He just didn't really get the hang of it. And he ran on extremely well all the way to the line. And I think this is quite a good race. Yeah, there I think it's a strong race. A lot yeah. of horses fancied in here. Yeah. Um, and the Noto was very disappointing. This horse ran on best of all. Yeah. Um, no, they ran a very good race. And you've got to be with it next time. As I say, bred by Nadison Park and um, uh, trained by a yoga's governor. Put that in your little black book and have a close look at that. Let's go and see um, at where are they now. Our South Africa, uh, Trevor Brown here. I'm currently in Dubai. I've been here for the last 19 years. I left South Africa in 2001, um, ex-heavy jock. Uh, I worked for Satish Seema for two years before joining Mark de Kock, um, and I've been assistant to him ever since. Cheers. If you've been involved in horse racing in South Africa, but have either moved away, immigrated, or retired, we want to hear from you. Send us a short 30-second video recording on WhatsApp, and we'll flight it on the show. Clips can be sent to either James on 071-588-5769 or Paul on 083-779-1311. We look forward to hearing from you. Trevor Brown, okay, wonderful of you to send in that clip. Now, for those of you that have never been to Dubai, the institution in Dubai is Trevor Brown. Absolutely. Trevor and Joe. Yeah, they, Trevor and Joe, wonderful people, accommodating, friendly. The, these are really, really good people, and he's, he's as constant as the Northern Star. Yeah, absolutely. Always um, got the job done. Always. Always happy to give you a bit of help as far as any of the horses are concerned. Um, as far as the whole of Dubai racing yeah. concerned, gives us lifts everywhere. He's he, a superb man. And 19 years, eh, Jim? 19 years. And he's the, the backbone of Mike's operation. Yeah. I think Mike would agree that he's the backbone. We're going to get um, a couple of the guys from Dubai. We've got yeah. uh, Paulie Devlin. Justin Henson. Justin Henson. Mm -hmm. We saw Justin Henson there the other day. Uh, and then there's obviously your assistant, Zahn Thompson. Zahn Thompson. I think we should have a couple of couple of uh, weeks of Dubai guys. Yeah. The other guys, Declan Cronin. That will be an interesting one. Yeah, Let's see if we can Ferrier. get him. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Declan. They all South Africans. They they're all part of the operation there. Yeah. And when you look at that operation, you can see the happiness and friendliness, um, and they all know their job. Yeah. Trevor gets us around. Declan's the cook. I mean, he's one of the best Bry masters you've ever yeah. seen. He's just Bry. Paul Listen. Devlin, get your drink all day, every day. You know? Fantastic. And, <clears throat> and Heather. I mean, yeah. They're just they're they're wonderful people. Just, it's just, that's why we love going to Dubai. Um, you know, we get uh, Mike DeCock, and we get all these guys. And then there's Bernie Fair Herb was there. And, well, what a wonderful no, Johnny pub. G gets out Johnny there. Johnny G. That's a, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a great bunch. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go and have a look at the uh, Plum of the Week. Mm -hmm. 
Rococo being given every chance. White Seed on the inside. Mighty Gemini's towards the outside, but Makoko still goes down the inside as White Seed as they get to the last 200 meters. And Makoko's finding on the lead. Just Prime's trying to run on White Cedar, but Makoko's going on and will get it right today. Makoko has won it. White Cedar second, Just Prime third, and World Cruise ran fourth. Well, when Marcus sticks with uh, a maiden for the third time, and uh, you can get seven to two, four to one about this horse. I mean, this was ridiculous. It's a big price. Uh, this was the best price I've ever yeah. seen about a horse ever. What did they back in the race? The, 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 the good question. I think it was a touch of support on White Cider, but I'm just having a look at. Uh, I'm trying to think of who the money came for. Uh, was it Manalit Dennis Dry's horse? But Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. Said to you three times in a row he's going to ride a maiden when he's been beaten twice and normally yeah. he's never seen again, you know. Yeah, he said he's going to ride it confidently and he did. I'm very pleased. And as you say, it was, it was a good price. You know, Scotty bred the sauce. It's, it's uh, Bama Gok out of Udumo. Udumo was Double Clutch's sister. Double Clutch won nine for us. Yeah. So we had to buy the family and hopefully uh, it'll go because uh, uh, Magok won the Gold Cup for, for Sean Phillips. And how the hell did it get a name called Makoko? That's very easy. Neil Toby's colourless. He races it with Tijon and Robert Maingard. And uh, when he played for Bafana Bafana, and when he played for Kaiser Chiefs, that was his nickname, Makoko. What is a Makoko? Uh, it's a ham sandwich. Ham sandwich. It means ham so? sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Makoko okay. means well, ham sandwich. Yeah. Well done to the ham sandwich. <laughs> you idiot. I mean, can you believe that? Anyway, well done to Neil Toby, and um, I think a couple of them had a double on the day. Didn't he have two winners in his colours? No, just the oh. one. Uh, okay. Trevor Free had two. Okay, Trevor Faria too. Some of those boys, they yeah. really had a wonderful day. Makoko, when you see that type of price about a mark, they're, they're always pointers. And when you got onto Interbet, you could have, could have got four to one about this. It big was price, really, eh? really big well price, worth having yeah. a look at. Okay, we're going to come back with uh, current affairs. Whenever anyone asks me for a shrewd tip, my first response is always to tell them, open an Interbet account. That's the biggest certainty that I can give any punter with total confidence. Not only is it a good business, but it is interactive, exciting and great entertainment as well. My name is Snowy Brown. I'm a sports fanatic and I'm all about sports betting because of the unpredictability, the enjoyment of the team being the underdog and finishing first. Or a team scoring the winning goal in the last seconds of a match to be the victors. The beauty about this is that if I'm betting on the soccer, I can use in-play betting which allows me to bet across multiple areas of the game. Knowing I have full control of my betting spread and where my money goes gives me satisfaction that Interbet has given me the power to control my bets. In my opinion, Interbet were the pioneers of online and Moby betting in South Africa and will continue to lead the way. Interbet, where the professionals bet. Hi and welcome uh, to uh, Current Affairs. We've got two stakes races for you. A very good uh, sprint up in Gauteng, the Senor Santa. What a great race horse he was. And then, of course, there was the Cheltenham Week. Great excitement. We always like to bring you the Gold Cup and uh, show you what they get up to. Jim, Cheltenham, have you ever been? I've never been. 
I have a number of times. Um, you know, very friendly with um, Nikki Henderson and his wife Diana. They did and, well. And she, she's got a box up there, and um, was uh, and so used to go a lot. I mean, I really enjoyed going to Cheltenham. Yeah. It was one of the great, great events, uh, racing events of the year. I, I saw a clip, Jim. I thought it was around the pub. There it was the parade ring. Yeah. There were so many people in the parade ring. Yeah. They come out here in the middle, interspersed, there were these jockey silks, and I thought, wow, how did they come out in their droves? In their droves. You've never seen so many people at yeah. a race meeting. Look, <clears throat> obviously, uh, Ep uh, the Derby, Investec Derby, Melbourne Cup, yeah. all these places, all these race meetings are July. Yeah, vertical you know, in July, they, yeah. They, they, they are full. events that people go to. I've yeah. got a... Um, uh, uh, He's uh, and my nephew, my niece's husband, not a racing man at all. He and his mates go one day every single year, and they spend the time in the pub having a lovely time. You know, and, yeah, it looks like a, the like, Irish come in the droves. Huh, the Irish love to beat the English. It's the Irish big, ball. Yeah, it's a big um, uh, fight between the two to see who's going to w uh, win the most you races. You hear the commentator say, "An opening race has gone to the Irish." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think we've got the Senior Centre yeah. Stakes first, so let's go into the Senior Centre Stakes and have a look um, at what that's all about. That was a 1,200. It's a grade two prime for Oratoria. Uh, he had a good weekend. Very good weekend. Both and features. This, this grey horse is a very nice horse. Let's go and pick him up comes Riverine with towards the back of the field exquisite touch. 500 metres left to go, it's Mardi Gras in front Green Plains, Billy Silver, then Romy's boy down to zero, Skippers was further back, Prince of Cahal got about three lanes to make up, after those to trip to heaven but it's still Mardi Gras in the lead, second place is down to zero, then comes Billy Silver in the middle of the course is Prince of Cahal and Skippers trying to barge away through Mardi Gras in the lead but there are challenges from Prince of Cahal up the inside but it's still Mardi Gras and Mardi Gras gets his big win. Mardi Gras beat Prince of Cahal. Third goes to Exquisite Touch, who flew, and fourth to Skippers. Yeah, great weekend for Oratorio. Oratorio is just getting better and better. Pippa's got to be very excited, but well done to all the connections of this horse. This great can run. Yeah, he cost 3.25 million, 3.2 million at the yearling sales. I didn't realize so he that. Wasn't a, he wasn't a cheap horse. He's a lovely looking he uh, grey. He's out yeah. of their champion mare, Saraband. You know, uh, they, named the wine after, they, na they named the wine after Sarabande. Sar Sarabande is a Spanish dance, and Sarabande won a group one for Joe Ramson. Yeah? Yeah. So the there you, That's there you where the grey comes from, yeah. Okay, and it won pretty easily. It looked like a very yes. competitive handicap. Yes. And um, it, it, she, he won very easily, and I think uh, behind the answer from Fearham, congrat to be yeah, congratulated. He's doing well. He kept he's this very well on the boil for a long, long time. time. Yeah. yeah, well done yeah. to Johan yeah. and all the clients and the breeders at. Uh, it was a very polished performance, I thought. Yeah. Um, I was in Australia last week uh, for Magic Millions, the Adelaide yeah. Sale. Yeah, I want to thank, can't thank you enough, you know, for buying me Harry's son's brother. Well, when it wins a group one, then you'll take Then I'll drop. thank you. Yeah. Then I'll okay. thank you. He, yeah. He's a lovely, lovely horse by yeah. first season sire. Yeah. Who died? Um, yeah, and that's always a good time sign. for War, yeah. I think his name yeah. is. Time he's for a, War. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, um, James, how was the sale overall? It, let's... It's a, it's a phenomenon worldwide that the lower-priced horses are not going for much money. They're not, you can buy <coughs> horses very yeah. reasonably. Yeah. As, as was held yesterday. Same, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and the horses at the bottom of the market are very difficult to get rid of, which shows that you're getting less and less people with a few rand to spend buying horses. Yeah. Um, and and uh, that's quite worrying. And I think that might be an indictment on what uh, the racing industry is all about. Yeah, it's going through that. That's why you have to syndicate now, James. Uh, Harry's son's uh, brother, who you bought me, who could end up being called Harry's brother. Yeah. Uh, we have to syndicate a horse like this. You know, we haven't got yeah. a, a one man who's going to come in no, and buy it. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you've you, you got to take a chance on, to, uh, for me, the best horse I've ever trained is brother, brother, you know. Well, certainly, you know, the thing is, is that you can, can go and buy an average horse at the yearling sales here. For more money. For, the, for more money than you paid for this horse. So yeah. It just shows you uh, the, the transport costs. You put, every, you put everything on. in, it's well worth it. Jim, yeah. tell me, how were Barry and Chuck and, and uh, they, the auctioneers, they were, and they're they, all, all on song? They run a fantastic operation. You know, you've got Tim down there, he runs uh, the Adelaide side of it, mm -hmm. and um, Adrian Hancock. 
Uh, Tim Brown. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Adrian Hancock, that's <laughs> right. Adrian they, 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 they're the sort of South Australia representatives. That's right, okay? yeah. And then Chuck, I mean, Chuck's magnificent. She just, everything is all She's coming out to our nationals. You know what I like about the people you mentioned, the Barrys, the Grant Burns, the Steve Davis, and them? They've all they've got, they've got horses with me, you know. They've yeah. had horses with me. They they're wonderful people. They, they support invest, South yeah. Africa they, they racing. They support. I mean, and they're very good to us. Fabulous, you know? yeah. how good. And and I I saw uh, Vin uh, in the distance, but I never got to chat oh, to him. Pity, he's yeah. busy, Vin. You know. Yeah, well, he's got the uh, <laughs> <Trum>, Australia. <laughs> yeah. He's he's yeah. really busy. Anyway, isn't he, darling? I thought, well, where's, where's Vin? Is he's he not, uh, you know, he's not Kumo, what I'm no. saying. Of course he's not Kumo. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the other boy, he's in blue. Yeah, Godolphin. The, yeah, Godolphin. Yeah, Godolphin. Yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. Who we, we're going to be seeing later. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> let's go and have a look at the uh, uh, Gold Cup at Cheltenham. Uh, firstly, maybe we've got the, the clip from, um, for the sales, the Magic Million sales and the horses. Okay, let's see that. Let's have a look at that. Well, there we go. And uh, Jim, let's let's talk about the Gold Cup. You know, well, the, the June sale is the next sale that's coming up, and uh, that's the major yeah. one. I that's the major one. We've got to get ourselves organised. It, basically, it's yearlings, mares, yeah, and uh, and weanlings. Then, uh, and uh, sorry, it's weanlings, and, and, yeah. uh, and then yearlings. I bought some fabulous sources of the. Well, we've sale. got to get ourselves organised and get get. Yeah, no, well, I'm some, definitely going. Get I've, some clients. I've got one or two very keen. Excellent. And uh, yeah, no, I always go to that sale because. Uh, it's it's I think it's a thousand lots. Yeah, you can yeah, get a the, thousand lots, and they've got a lot of good stallions. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go and have a look at the Gold Cup, and we're going to pick them up from the start. This is a, a wonderful spectacle of unbelievable jumping, and a great triumph for probably one of the greatest trainers that ever lived, Willie Mullins. He'd never won a Gold Cup. He ran second six times. Let's go and watch his moment in the sun. And they're off. Racing towards the first in the Magnus Cheltenham Gold Cup of 2019. Might bite towards the inside of Elegant Escape and Invitation only in the early charge with Clandes Obo and definitely Red also handy over the first fence and then in behind the bells. And gone there, Kemboy. Kemboy is down on the inside, took a bad step on landing and has unseated David Mullins. At the second, Might bite and Invitation only in the air together. Followed by definitely Red in the red sleeve in third place. Elegant escape round the inside from Clandes Obo. Then Yala Enki, who got very warm beforehand. Double shuffle on the outside of Thistle Crack. Last year's winner, Native River, made just about all last year, but he's only in about seventh or eighth place in these early stages as they run round the turn into the back straight. Happy to report that Ken Boy is absolutely fine and he's getting a cheer from the crowd as he races up the run-in. Down the back straight, Mike Bite from Invitation Only. Invitation Only and might bite followed by definitely red native river slowly getting into some sort of contention though pushed along by richard johnson yala enki's on the outside back on the inside the nose banded elegant escape from clandes obo further back is thistle crack with our boom photo double shuffle out wide with the gray bristol de may back on the inside is bells hill alongside annibal fly presenting percy held up at the back of the field at this open ditch oh a couple of mistakes bells hill made a right mess of it back in the field might bite left in front as they go on towards the next might bite from invitation only and definitely red followed by native river in top gear elegant escape and out wide definitely red of those then came clandes obo thistle crack in the orange jacket annabelle fly on the inside then of album photo and double shuffle this is another open ditch presenting percy held up well off the pace in these still early stages from shattered love bells hill again didn't jump that one too well yala enki towards the rear bristol de may is the widest runner of all on to the next might bite last year's runner-up over in front by a half length to invitation only another blunder from bells hill at the rear of the field as they reach the top of the hill for the first time might bite invitation only native river into contention now on the inside definitely red out 
wide is fourth. They're followed by Elegant Escape as they jump this next plane fence. Clandes Obo close up with Album Photo and then double shuffle behind these. On the inside, Annabelle Fly just behind Elegant Escape. And Bells Hill has been pulled up after a sequence of errors. Bells Hill is out of the race. Ruby Walsh has pulled him up. On towards the next. Definitely Red Luckless has been brought down there. Invitation only falling with Patrick Mullins as they race to the ho home turn this time round. Might bite from Native River now. Last year's first two. Elegant Escape is handy in third. Clandes Obo, the King George winner, in fourth place. Annabelle Fly, last year's third round the inside from album photo then presenting Percy double shuffle Bristol to May shattered love is further back thistle crack is well off the pace didn't jump that one too quickly and Yala Enki out wide so on towards the fence in front of the stands with a circuit left ahead of them and Native River has slowly now got to the lead in the hands of Richard Johnson on the outside of might bite will they duel again 12 months on for them after their famous clash last year Clandes Omo in third on the outside of Elegant Escape. Three lengths to Album Photo. Then Annabelle Fly on the inside of Bristol to May. Double shuffle out wide. Presenting Percy still tucked in on the inside under Davy Russell in the green jacket. The nose banded presenting Percy alongside Shattered Love. Then Yala Enki towards the back with Thistle Crack. Into the back straight. It's Native River from Might Bite again. One and two. Elegant Escape on the inside of Clanders Oboe and Album Photo. On towards the next. This is the water jump. Richard Johnson just stole a half glance to see where the others are. They're not far behind. Native River from Might Bite. And now on to an open ditch. Clanders Obo remains in third place under Harry Cobden. Here's this ditch. Good jumps by the front two. Native River on the inside, but driven along uh, on landing. Might Bite going better. Much his best run of the season so far. Then in third, Clanders Obo. As they jump the next, neither overly good there. Bristol de May made a slight mistake state went in about fifth or sixth place so Clandes Oboe's third then album photo behind those is Elegant Escape presenting Percy with plenty to do this is six out in the Gold Cup and open ditch Native River from Mike Bite in third Clandes Oboe album photo behind those they're going to bypass the third last here ra racing on towards the next this next plane fence and it's Native River and Mike Bite album photo moving up well on the outside of Clandes Oboe then Bristol de May followed by Elegant Escape, Double Shuffle has been pulled up. Presenting Percy has been pulled to the outside just behind Shattered Love as they reach the top of the hill. Annabelle flies further back and then Yala Enki at the next. Richard Johnson going for a huge jump from Native River and the horse came up wonderfully well. Native River defending his crown with great tenacity, leading the way to Mike Bite. Then Album Photo on the outside, Clanders Obo. They're bypassing the next. They're being waved round. Bristol de May is a close up fifth, then Shattered Love presenting Percy, being pushed along and then in behind those, Annabelle Fly, Elegant Escape still there on the inside, they run towards the final turn a hugely wide open race Native River driven along in front is he there on sufferance, Clandes Obo appearing on his inside Album Photo comes there strongly here's Bristol de May having a going day out wide from Annabelle Fly and Elegant Escape and then presenting Percy as Might Bite drops away this is the second last Album Photo comes through to take it up. Album Photo reaches for it. He was untidy from Clanders Obo, the Grey Bristol de May, then Native River and Annabelle Fly approaching the last. Paul Townend on Album Photo and he's safely over and drawing away. Four or five lengths to Bristol de May, then Annabelle Fly, Native River and Clanders Obo and stretching out up the hill. It's Album Photo. Annabelle Fly is staying on well, but no photo required. Album Photo wins the Magnus Cheltenham Gold Cup. Annabelle Fly closing well up the hill in second. Bristol to my a big run in third, followed by Native River and Clanders Obo. What a great race. Fantastic horses, James. All those horses in there. Last year's winner, two years ago's winner, the King George winner. Yeah. And the, the, the winner was ridden by um, Townsend, who's the second jockey to Ruby Walsh for Willie Mullins. So he, so really he the other Paul one. Townsend doesn't often get a chance. Great for him. Great for him to be able to win it. Yeah. Um, the other big winner at Ch Cheltenham, Lee Westwood. Our mate Lee. Yeah, the gambler. <laughs> a gambler. He's a he's a great guy. Loves racing. 
Um, you know, he's been involved with horses with Mike Lecoq and a couple of, I think Eric Sands, yeah. he had that uh, Grand Jetta that yeah, they had there. Yeah, that's right. And um, he won 48,200 pounds for 240 pounds. He took what's called a super heights, okay? Super I love these type of bets because, and we, the bookmakers here should have these bets because yeah. they're great. They're great for, for racing. Like, People uh, love to what have, do we got here? Yankees and... Yeah, but everyone should be giving these, these type of bets. Yeah. And I'm going to be talking to you bet about it because the super heights, seven bets he had. Seven Six bets. of them won. Seven horses. Seven horses. Six of them won. And he wow. won forty eight thousand two hundred pounds. Not like Lee needs the money. He had a good. He's had a good six months. Yeah. He won the the Ned Bank. Yeah, that's right. No, <laughs> he's not short of pounds. But if you gamble, you want to win, even regardless how much you got. That's just the nature of the beast. Yeah, absolutely. The big news is out of Santa Anita, and um, uh, Belinda Stronach and her Stronach group have really put their head right in the noose because they've teamed up with uh, a bunch called Peter. Okay, yeah, the animals, and Peter are animals. not good for racing. They Animal want to Peter. close down horse racing. Yeah. So she then said that after 23 breakdowns at Santa Anita's meet since December, um, that there's the, something wrong there, James. That, yeah, They've well, there's the something wrong with the track. It's yeah, not track. to do with Lassics, okay? No, nothing to do with okay. Lassics. Lassics well, are still allowed. And she's now banned Lassics, okay? Um, for anything that turns three next year, will be banned from reusing Lassics. And she's cut the dose from 10 cc's to 5 cc's race day as a sort of like a wishy-washy, okay, well, we'll, we'll pander to the She'll horsemen. She'll never win that but, one. Uh, but uh, Peter Miller, one of the top trainers there, has come out in absolutely against her. And yeah. it's a, they completely There's divided. a problem with the track, James. Graham Motion wrote, wrote a very good letter. He's a great letter writer. He's a great letter writer, and he's wrote a, a very good letter in TDN about this. Okay, and what's his they take? want to ban the whips as well because she's involved with Peter, this Belinda. Yeah, yeah, she's fighting with her father. She took over. Yeah, she uh, took over Frank's business. Group. Yeah, yeah, and she's um, in big trouble with them. So, uh, what's all I can space? tell you what's is it's, it's a nightmare because Delmar have come out and said we're not banning anything. We're yeah, carrying on the same way as we. You all see, the Stronachs are involved with the ownership of tracks. The interesting thing is, they own the tracks, and they had three runners over the weekend, two at Laurel and one somewhere else, and all three ran on, on Lassics. Yeah. Okay. If you're so big on this, no Lassics, She's not the first, pass it. first person but should be doing it is you with your The own Californian answer. Horse Racing Board ain't going to pass them. And you know, you know what the most the, the shocking thing about what she's done is that the three-year-olds now are not going to race on Lassics, and they're going to race in all these big races against the four- and five-year-olds who are alive. And they're going to go to the province. <laughs> James, James, when the Breeders' Cup comes along, she every into, a, every country puts their horse on Lassics. She shot Breeders herself Cup. in the foot properly. I mean, well, properly. She's, she's going to get... Uh, yeah. You know, the funny thing is, the, the, around the States, there are people who own these race courses, yes. and they can make the rules. Yes, of course. That they are not the jockey club. They own the course. And if you run at our course, you can't do this, well, that, and that. The, the, the classic one is in New York, the harness right. track in New York, where yes. that guy, but he doesn't take any knots. No, he's stuff. spun he, out. He's different class. Yeah. Anyway, listen, we've got the Dolly Stallions, the Stallion Parade coming up. We're going straight into that in your call. Don't miss it. It's a great, great feature. Until next week, have a great week's racing.
Well, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful day we have for us. Postponed opening the 2018 Dali Stallion Parade. He's just covered his first book of mares here at Dallam Hall. He was a record breaker, European champion. His highest rated effort was for winning the Judmont International. It's truly magnificent in full flight, a very popular racehorse. And he retired last year as the highest rated horse trained in Britain or Ireland with a time form rating of that magic 130 after no fewer than four victories at Group 1 level. He's been exceptionally well supported by you, the breeders, with a first book that includes 72 group winners or their dams, daughters or siblings. They include Group 1 winner, Ajman Princess, plus the dam of Coronation Stakes heroine Fallen for You and the dam of fellow Dali Stallion and fellow multiple group and Grade 1 winner, Hunter's Light. Big striding, dear Philo. Undefeated European champion as a juvenile and now firmly established as an exceptional sire of runners of the very highest class. And this year alone, he sired 27 runners rated 100 or higher by time form. Ladies and gentlemen, that puts him right up with the elite stallions of Europe, Dubawi, his own sire Galileo and Frankel, who of course is bred on that same Galileo Danehill cross. Another key statistic, he has sired 11% stakes winners to runners aged three and up and you know the value of that. Tia Filo, who sired 14 Group 1 winners so far. Horses like Classic winners, Trading Leather and Pleishkot, both trained by Tia Filo's trainer Jim Bolger. His first stallion son is Havana Gold, Britain's leading freshman sire last year. Just feast your eyes on that imposing physique, his lithe athleticism, the battling resolve he showed when winning the Dewhurst, what, 12 years ago now? That is what you get when you send a mare to Tia Filo, pure class. Looming out of the shadows, here he comes. One of the best sprinters of recent times, back near the scene of perhaps his greatest triumph. This is Slade Power, ladies and gentlemen. And Slade Power retired with a higher rating than his own sire, Dutch Art, his grandsire, Medician, his great-grandsire, Machiavellian. In fact, he was assessed as the best horse from the Machiavellian sire line since the outstanding Street Cry. His first yearlings made up to 310,000 euros at last year's sales some of the shrewdest judges in the business buying his offspring. He's done incredibly well at stud, let down beautifully, and he's had some incredibly promising winners to his name as well, including the stakes for Strings of Life, who was victorious at Newmarket's Craven meeting on her racecourse debut. And there's lots of other exciting runners to look forward to as well, and if they progress as well as he did, he surely will be his great-grandsire Machiavellian's rightful heir. This is from Australia, and this is Brazen Bow. He was a champion sprinter as a three-year-old, a rare enough feat in a country where speed is king, but a title also held by fellow Dali Stallion Exceed and Excel, more of whom later in his day. He really was a very, very smart three-year-old, ladies and gentlemen, and his first crop of yearlings will be at the sales this autumn, and if his first Australian crop's anything to go by, they'll go down really well. He is Australia's leading first season sire at the sales, where his offspring made up to $700,000 and averaged a very impressive $155,000. That's almost 90,000 sterling. Brazen Bow, then. He's the best male descendant of Invincible Spirit after the superb Kingman. Quite something. And hailing from that green desert lineage, famous for its explosively fast performers and, of course, its very good stallions. Brazenbow retired as the best sprinter from this line since Oasis Dream, and he's the very best by the Australian phenomenon, I Am Invincible. And if you're still wondering if he's got what it takes, well, he's from the family of top stallion Night Shift. Territories. If you're talking about stallion families, there are none better than this horse's. Group 1 two-year-old, classic miler, the best in his outstanding family since two of the most significant outcross sires of our time, the aforementioned Street Cry and that Dali stalwart Shamadal. Territories has his first foals on the ground, and what an impression they've been making on studs around Europe. He's one of the best miling sons of Invincible Spirit, the sire of Kingman, and he's just completed his second season here at Dallam Hall. And Chris reports he's doing incredibly well. 
His first two books include 190 stakes winners, or dams or siblings of stakes winners, and 39 daughters of or siblings to group one winners. So he has been given by all the people here at Dalham Hall every chance to be as good a stallion as Shamadal and Street Cry. And his pedigree, he's got the looks, and crucially, he's got the race record. And those of you with breeding rights ought to be very excited. Brazen Bow territories are now profitable. That invincible spirit influence continuing with the great stallion's best sprinting son. This is he. You'll struggle to find a better looking speed horse either. New to the roster at Kildangan this year, he's had nearly 160 mares tested in full, so he'll be very well represented at the sales and on the race course in years ahead. He dominated the sprint rankings through the spring of 2016 with victories in the Group 3 Palace House Stakes, the Group 2 Temple Stakes at Haydock Park, before he defeated an international field in the Group 1 King Stand Stakes at Royal Ascot. He was an elite sprinter, like his sire and like his grandsire before him, like Invincible Spirit, like Green Desert. He's out of a mare by another Indian Ridge. And these are some of the most profoundly influential speed sire lines of recent decades. This is profitable, ladies and gentlemen, and there must be every chance that he will join his sire, his grandsire, his maternal grandsire, as a significant source of speed, durability, and real class in the years to come. Golden Horn, ladies and gentlemen, in all his magnificent dappled glory, the 2015 Horse of the Year. He was quite simply as accomplished a racehorse as you are ever likely to see, today or any other day. He carried all before him during his classic year. He won the Dante Stakes at York, the Derby, the Eclipse Stakes, the Irish Champion Stakes, and of course, memorably under that brilliant ride, the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. And he was rated superior to any turf performer in the world. And his Derby win, ladies and gents, as I'm sure you know, was the third fastest ever earning him that time form 130, fully four pounds ahead of Cape Cross's first derby winner, the simply brilliant See the Stars, after his own win in the race. And this year, 2018, he's once again covered an elite book of mares. Over 70% of them are group winners or their dams or their siblings. Parading on the lawn here at Dalham Hall for the first time, here is Ribchester. European champion Myler at three, European champion Myler again at four, the best possible advertisement for his sire, Ifraj. He broke his maiden in the group two Mill Reef Stakes at Newbury as a two-year-old. He won the Jersey Stakes at Royal Ascot over seven furlongs as a three-year-old on his way to this victory in the group one Prix Jacques de Marois. Now that earned him his first title as champion Myler and three more elite victories last season kept him right at the very top. He won the lock-in stakes by a wide margin at Newbury. He finished with the Prix de Moulin at Longchamp at Chantilly last September, but this, breaking the straight mile track record in the Queen Anne stakes at Royal Ascot, was perhaps his finest hour. He's the first horse to win back-to-back -back European champion Myler titles since Frankel. This is Fast Company, an intriguing horse with a mightily progressive profile as a stallion. He sired a Norfolk Stakes winner and plenty of other good winners in his first crop and then the Irish 1,000 Guineas winner in his second crop. Now that was from an incredibly low fee and without the assistance of the very best mares. But success has brought its rewards. Since transferring to Kildangan, he's had the support of so many of you, some of Europe's most astute breeders, and the smart money says this is a stallion not just to watch, but to use and to keep using. As well as Jet Setting, that classic winner, and Baitha Alga, his Royal Ascot Juvenile, he's had Group 1 Philly Devonshire, High Class Sprinters Downforce and Penny Pepper, plus handfuls of stakes winning juveniles and big handicap winners. Fast Company and his first post-jet setting crop are foals of 2018. His book was again very big and full of quality this year. You are going to be hearing much, much more about him. And he is the handsome last lion. He was, ladies and gents, the toughest of two-year-olds. A model of class and consistency in a two-year-old campaign that ran all the way from the Brocklesby at Doncaster on the first day of the turf season to the Group 1 Middle Park Stakes here at Newmarket. He was precocious, he was gritty, 
He was tough, always up for the fight. And after his middle park win, the last line was rated the equal of Caravaggio, the Commonwealth Cup winner, and Churchill, the 2000 Guineas winner, as the joint best two-year-old colt in Europe. So he was hugely talented as well. Now, the last middle park winner, ladies and gents, to retire as a two-year-old was Dark Angel, and what a fantastic stallion he has turned out to be. And it's worth pointing out that this horse, the last lion, was superior to Dark Angel as a racehorse, and official ratings bear testament to that. He's by Choisir, also the sire of Royal Ascot Juvenile Producing Stallion Star Spangled Banner, and his dam was a Group 1 Juvenile for good measure. Speed, early maturing power, and no shortage of innate ability. It's in his genes, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last lion. Knight of Thunder, the 2000 Guineas winner and member of Dubawi's ever-growing dynasty. An undefeated listed winner as a juvenile, he won a 2000 Guineas rated by Timeform as the best renewal, and listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, the best renewal since Brigadier Gerard beat Mill Reef. Eight Group 1 winners were behind Knight of Thunder that afternoon, including Kingman, Australia, Charm Spirit, and Knight of Thunder trained on to win the Group 1 lock-in stakes at Newbury at four. So, ladies and gents, what have you got here? You've got classic ability. You've got a dash of precocity. You've got the battling resolve. You've got the durability. He really is, as you can see today, and he is beautifully relaxed this afternoon, quite a package. Now, Knight of Thunder's first foals were bought by some of you and some of the best judges in the game last year. Peter and Ross Doyle, Blanford Bloodstock, Tally Ho, Yeomanstown, Mags O'Toole, Stroud Coleman, Jamie Railton, and so many more. And, of course, Godolphin and Rabba. Knight of Thunder's yearlings are at the sales this autumn, and there are exciting seasons ahead for this fellow. Another Guineas winner as well. What a racehorse. Dawn Approach. He's by the sire of the Derby winner, Massar, of course. And Dawn Approach's juvenile campaign was quite extraordinary. He won on the opening day of the two-year-old racing calendar. He won the first two-year-old stakes race of the year. He landed the Group 2 Coventry stakes, the Group 1 National stakes, and he won the Group 1 Dewhurst. His Group 1 winning ways continued at three with a five-length victory in the 2000 Guineas. He then made a successful return to Royal Ascot. He had that terrific battle with Toronado of whom he got the better. Dawn approaches first crop, and now three-year-olds, and he's going well with five group performers. Exciting young sprinter Haddaf won the Scurry Stakes for James Tate, and he's got a top-class filly in France as well, trained by Andre Fab, and that is Muzis Amica. He's by the sire of Massar, new approach, a Coventry winner, classic winner, classic bloodlines, a classic filly in his first crop. He is Dawn approach. Just some horses just look fast, and this is one of them, and he is. Buratino, the Coventry Stakes winner, very smart son of that new sire of sires, Exceed and Excel. And like the last lion, and like Dawn Approach, who you've just seen, Buratino won on the opening day of the season. He will be imparting precocity to your mares. He was brilliantly handled by Mark Johnston. He went on to take the Woodcut Stakes, which had patent status at the time on Derby Day, following up 10 days later with this impressive victory in the Coventry. And after that, Buratino raced solely in Group 1 company, as you might expect. He put up a terrific performance in the Phoenix Stakes and in the Middle Park, where he was only narrowly beaten by Shalar. He's the best European two-year-old by Exceed and Excel. He's from the family of champion side Danehill Dancer, who he was rated superior to, incidentally. And Exceed and Excel is doing very nicely as a sire of size, as I said, with Bungle in the Jungle and Kuroshio among the first season sires and Helmet and Acceleration both siring major group or grade one winners. If you're going to spend 625,000 guineas, you want a good looking horse. That's what this horse cost as a yearling and this is why. He's by Oasis Dream out of Annabelle's Charm by Indian Ridge. He is Charming Thought. Rated higher than showcasing. The best stallion son of Oasis Dream so far. He was a very high-class juvenile after victories in minor races at Lingfield and Leicester. He took a big step up and faced a select field in the Middle Park Stakes. Richmond and July Stakes winner Ivor Wood, Jim Crack Hero and future champion sprinter Muhara, Railway Stakes and pre-Robert Papin winner Cool Company, all the best sprinting juveniles of that era 
put to the sword by this horse. Charming thought. He's by Oasis Dream, so he is by a proven sire of sires. Exceptional confirmation. He's a group one winner as a two-year-old. But that's not all. He's stamping his foals really well. He's got all the right attributes. And who's to say confidently that he will not be the one, the one for the next generation? Very distinctive and very popular. Another one by Exceed and Excel. He's out of accessories by Singspiel. It's a pure Dali family through and through. He is, of course, the beast that is Helmet. And you couldn't wish for a better advert for his sire. A superstar in his native Australia, Helmet won the Australian equivalent of the Dewhurst, the Racing Post Trophy, the 2000 Guineas, and rated the best two-year-old yet by Exceed and Excel. He got away to a lightning fast start to his stallion career with plenty of impressive precocious winners, but every stallion needs that one marquee horse that's really gonna push them through the barrier and he got it in his first crop with Thundersnow's win in the Group 1 Criteria Internationale over seven furlongs in Paris. And after winning the UAE 2000 Guineas and the UAE Derby, Thundersnow added to his Group 1 haul in the Prix Jean Prat. So versatile, dirt to turf, two-year-old, three-year-old, and then he capped the lot with this storming victory in the Dubai World Cup. Now the best may well yet be to come. Early success has granted Helmet ever bigger and better books. He's a record breaker in his native Australia. He's gained global fame with the exploits of his offspring. This is far. He's a second season sire sensation. The best ever racehorse by Pivotal. That makes him better than Sayuni. And what a stallion he's turning out to be. Better than Kailaki. What a brilliant racehorse and stallion he's been. But this horse far was supremely gifted on the track. Fast, determined, with an awesome, relentless stride. And a model of consistency, he made the frame in each and every one of his 10 race course appearances. Undefeated at two, unbeaten at three, made a fist of it against Frankel at four, and just about made the best of that. And rounded off his racing career with victory in the champion stakes. And how about this as a mark of his constitution? Every time he returned to the fray after a break, he was, according to time form, even better than the last time he left it. He's made a terrific start at stud. He's the leading second season sire by percentage of stakes winners to runners, stakes horses to runners, and group winners to runners. As ever, he'll have a limited book to maintain his fertility far, and Dawn and her team have kept breeders closely informed with how he's going. I'm very happy to talk to you about him today. 70% of his mares covered in foal. There'll never be huge numbers to this horse, but he is a horse you can consider with a degree of confidence granted his brilliant ability on the race course and the ability that now some of his progeny is showing. You wouldn't know it, but he's 18 years old. Exceed and excel. You've seen the sons, now here's the daddy. The very first of the Dali reverse shuttlers and the most well-traveled stallion in the business. He remains the best sire of juvenile winners and juvenile stakes winners in the world. He's a real global pioneer of a stallion, a champion sprinter at three. Exceed and Excel has over 140 runners who've earned black type as two-year-olds. The latest being recent Newmarket listed winner, Royal Intervention. It's not just his two-year-olds who continue to cement his position as a leading sire, only Dubawi, who we'll see very shortly, and Galileo have more horses rated 120 or higher by time form this year. This horse is building a real legacy, ladies and gents, as a true sire of sires, building his own dynasty, not only through Helmet, who you saw a few moments ago, but also through this year's leading first season sires, Bungle in the Jungle and Kuroshio. He's founding a sire line all of his own, and very few can boast that claim. Ladies and gents, he is exceed and excel, Dubawi, 16 years old, and continuing the legacy, the tragically brief legacy of Dubai Millennium. Dubawi, officially the most successful sire ever to stand in Britain, and without doubt, and no hyperbole here, one of the very best in the world. Hot news this week, 100 group winners, and in the four decades of the pattern, no British stallion has ever been so successful. Now, it's often said that racing's a numbers game. 16% stakes winners to runners, 10% group winners to runners. They are the best in the business. 
And here's another huge number, 35 Group 1 winners to his name, including Ben Battle. The Dubawi dynasty, ladies and gentlemen, you have been in the presence of greatness once again. The history-making, breed-shaping Dubawi. Arta, thank you very much. New approach, Derby winner, and 10 years on, Derby sire. Magnificent chestnut powerhouse. New approach, the unbeaten European champion at two, beaten a nose in the guineas before winning the Derby. And then the champion stakes in record time on the Roly Mile. Flying start at stud. The first stallion ever to sire three Royal Ascot Group or stakes winning juveniles in the same season. And what's more, he did it with his very first crop. He had the Guineas winner, Dawn Approach. The Oaks winner, Talent. The Derby runner-up, the Ledger runner-up. In that first crop, what a sensational start he had. And from the crop conceived the year after all those great early successes, New Approach has already sired four Group or Grade 1 performers. He's got more Group 1 horses from this crop than any other stallion after his own sire, Galileo. Quite simply, you get whatever you want from New Approach. You get champion milers, brilliant juveniles, top-class stayers. But most of all, you get a Derby winner. Massa, ladies and gentlemen, what a way to finish the sire of this year's Derby winner, New Approach.